Hello again and welcome to another video on train simulator controllers. If you aren't completely sick of them now, you may well be by the end of this. Last year I made a couple of videos making these modules for Train Simulator Classic. If you haven't seen those, I'll link them below. This is going to be a follow-up series because I've used these for a while and frankly they need improving. There are some issues with them that I'll explain and then I'm going to go on to try and resolve. This video is going to be split up into chapters because I have quite a lot of props I need to show and I need to get all those ready. Before starting with the problems with the existing system, I'm just going to add a quick note about this module and a change I've added since I made those older videos. I did briefly speak about it at the time, but as well as the DVD reset being here, I've now added a USB port and a switch. These are for the pedal from a Caesar scanner, but could be used with any pedal with two wires, and allows it to be plugged in and selected as normally open or normally closed switch. So either you press the pedal to acknowledge the DVD, reset the DVD, or you release the pedal as you would in a real train. And you just need to make sure you keep the pedal depressed when you go into normally closed. That's also programmed in the Arduino, and I'll explain more about that when I get to programming it in the new controllers. Firstly, let's talk about the issues with the existing system, and the main one is cabling. Because there are four modules, and they all have an Arduino each, they need to be connected with cables, four USB cables. And then to connect those modules to the base station, I need to have three 3.5mm three audio cables. These are nice stretchy cables, these are good USB cables, and I have a hub at the top there, but still, it's a lot of cabling. These are quite tight cables, they don't really like to stay in. And then of course I need to have a USB keyboard on the desk to be able to control the view and such. So uh, yeah, it gets quite awkward. And I want to eliminate all of this. And that's going to be my new approach. My new approach is to have one Arduino with a base station and four connectors for up to four modules. They'll all have the same wiring and modules can be installed at any position on the base station. This will also allow me to have double width modules, for example brakes on a class 37 or 158 or the throttle in a class 66 because these would both need to be wider. Because I'm using one Arduino, I won't need Arduino separately in each module. The wiring will be a lot simpler, I don't need to worry about communication between them like I did previously. I'm going to be using this Arduino Due, which is the largest Arduino to natively work as a USB keyboard. One of the considerations with this is the onboard storage for the code. Well, these Pro Micros have 32 kilobytes of storage each, but this has 512 kilobytes, so it can comfortably store four times the amount of code as the original four module setup, while being a lot easier to manage. Well the theory might be simple, but now we need to actually talk about the hardware. I decided to go with the DB37 connector to connect the modules to the base station because it's a big robust connector, quite easy to get hold of still, and it has enough pins to cover all the inputs and outputs that I needed. The idea is that the base station side connectors are all connected together with the same pins so I can plug any module in anywhere and it will have the same connections. I decided that to connect them all together and to the Arduino, the best thing to use was a 40 pin ribbon cable, so I had PCBWay make me up some circuit boards to convert the DB37 to the 40 pin IDE connector. I've soldered all these myself, double sided boards, I needed to get 10 so I have a few spares, but they're really nice, my first ever order with PCBWay, and this allows me to then use the 40 pin ribbon cable on here and add my own IDC connector wherever required to go down the line. That will then connect to the Arduino itself via this back to back adapter which will plug onto the Arduino on the bottom set of pins. On the module side I'm going to be using this DB37 female breakout which has the female plug on there 
and then has a load of terminal pins that I can use on here. I've already added a label because I've calculated which pins will need to go where and that tells me where they all go. You may or may not be able to read them properly there. So we have you know, emergency here, break auxiliary one and two, some grounds and some extra connectors there. I'm also going to be running five volts to this pin which would normally be used for ground and I'll explain why later on. I'm also going to need to do something extra. As well as all these modules connecting to the bottom inputs and outputs on the Arduino, I need to add an extra connector with some wires to the analog pins to allow me to use the analog and throttle and brake controls. Uh, unfortunately, the Arduino just doesn't have analog on those bottom pins, otherwise I wouldn't need to do that. For grounding within the modules, I'm going to be using these bus bars, and this one's already mounted in a prototype holder mount. They'll do the job just nicely. Much better than what I was doing previously, which was trying to connect all the grounds together with Wago terminals. Prototyping is something I've been doing a lot of, and I've done a bit of cardboard aided design here. It's full width, but I can't get it all in the shot, so this will have to do. But this is the base station prototype with main module which will house switches and buttons and then a couple of the module connectors in prototype holders. These, these are actually glued in place. These will become part of the base when they get 3D printed. These runners here allow the modules to slide in place and not move around. So them sliding around actually was a problem with the older ones that I didn't mention. And then the ribbon cable can be run in a line along here into the Arduino, it'll be in the center and then back out the other side to the other two. While looking at the inputs and outputs required for train simulator and what I could fit on the 37 or 40 pin connections, I realized that not everything needs to be on the modules. As such, I've made up this prototype panel, which will include guard call, ATP, DVD, and the DRA push pull. That's currently in place for this, which will be the part that I'll actually use, which is an illuminated switch. For view control, I have this prototype panel, which has nine buttons on it, which will control the nine views. This will connect directly to the Arduino, so again, no need to go through the module connector. Interestingly, these aren't all LED. I ordered these thinking they were LED. These ones are. These are incandescent and they won't illuminate at the low voltage of the Arduino like LEDs would. So this base station is going to have to have one USB connection and one 12 volt power connection for these. I might get away with nine volts actually because I've already got a nine volt connection over there, but that's something to test. There definitely needs to be an auxiliary power connection because the Arduino just wouldn't handle it. I'm currently printing pieces of the frame that will make up this base station this is one of the prototype pieces with the threaded heat inserts that I'll be using. That's going to be all over it and that will allow the panels I've just shown you to connect and also pieces to connect together and for covers to go on there because it'll be a skeletal frame with panels then fitted to it, much like the original train dashboard. Okay, so let's show you the next prototype. This is one of the 3D printed prototype module bases. You can see it's rather tall because it needs to fit in some bigger switches. And I already have the DB37 female breakout mounted in there. That's actually fit, fixed in there and connected at the back. It has a recess in the bottom that allows it to slide on the rail. It has the bus bar for the ground on the back here. And it also has some feet to mount the arm which is the uh, arm for the throttle and brake. Now this might need to be longer for this one, but um, that's how it's going to work still, similar to how it did before. And then the potentiometer will go on the end. One issue that this causes, as you might be able to see here, is it blocks certain connectors. So when I worked out the wiring, I made sure that the throttle and brake analog tries to avoid 
areas where it's blocked. So they're all further up or further down. And also the reason that five volts is brought to this connector down here, really hope you can see it, is because it's being blocked up here partly. I don't want to be bending wires too tightly. I'm going to be using much thicker wire that I'll show in a moment. I also have a prototype of the Class 66 brake controller. This is something I really wanted because I found that I actually enjoy playing with the Class 66 and it just didn't suit the controllers I already had. So that's one of the things that triggered this as well. This has a lot of dust on it, but it has the standard horn control, the joystick for the auto brake, it'll have a loco brake up here, the speed a limiter or speed controller actually isn't used in the game, but it'll be there anyway. Sander, and then we have the AWS and the emergency buttons here. These metallic buttons from Amazon are really quite nice, quite chunky buttons. And that's on the back. With the size of this, you can see why that module now needs to be so tall. With the recess in the bottom and the breakout connector, it pushes things up quite a bit. While I only have one lid, which is this Class 66 brake module, I have another base station prototype here that I was using to measure up the location of the breakout board. And it's worth mentioning that where a notch plate is required, this will be mounted in the lid rather than in the base like it was in the old one. It'll be part of the lid. So if you remove the lid, notch plate goes with it, and then you can refit another one to change which train it is, if you even need to. Similar to this test that I did previously with the notches in here, and this being a class 158, I can have an entire lid that's class 158. It may have a different throw, which can be controlled in the code, and have all the numbers all printed in blue, look very nicely, but it will have a separate module that comes further down. I'm also looking at having the actual lever, instead of the little ball that it was previously, maybe have a ball, ball bearing that runs along inside the notches. I'm going to see yet to experiment with that kind of thing. For selecting the different train profiles, I'm going to be pretty much doing the same as I did before. I have a slightly larger screen now, which is one of these 128 by 64 screens and a prototype mount here. This works exactly the same as the previous screen, so I don't need to change the code much, it just fits more on it. And hot off the 3D printer, I have this plate that will be used to mount it along with two buttons to a previous and next. One of the advantages of not using Arduinos in the modules and using the breakouts instead is that I can use a much thicker gauge wire. This is a bundle of cables that was a car radio extension cable. Uh, it has all the connections for a car ISO connectors and it's a much thicker gauge wire it accepts terminals much more nicely. I can use the uh, these or I can use ferrules to connect into the breakout and it's just much nicer, much nicer to work with. In fact, this piece I just showed you before, this is all wired up using this cable and it's much, much nicer. I even got some proper crimp connectors like that. And it's just gonna be a lot nicer to work with. I kept finding that wires were breaking with the Arduino the tiny little Arduino connectors and headers, or they'd come disconnected. This is going to be so much more robust. And finally, I wanted to show you the Arduino Due itself because it's a very nice bit of kit. They aren't particularly cheap, but it does come with its own little base, and I think it'll do really well for what I need it for. The connections at the bottom here are the ones I'm going to be using with this adapter for the 40 pin ribbon cable. This just connects in like that, and then I can connect the ribbon cable to the top. There will be an additional connector here, which then feeds to the analog pins to give me the throttle and brake connections. Then the base station connections for all the buttons and switches will also then connect to these, because they don't need to go through the module. And that's it, I haven't programmed anything yet, but the next update will come when I have something to show you. Um, I have things queued up for the 3D printer, so hopefully that won't be too long. Thanks for watching this, and I look forward to showing you the next part. Cheers!